your spirit is here today. We just thank you, Lord, that you are good. And God, we know that you're here, Lord. We know that you're here to move any mountain today, Lord, that anybody stays in. Because you're a good God. You're a good God. And we believe that in Jesus' name. Can I hear an amen? You are good, Lord. Without you, we can do nothing, God. And we know you're here today. I'm going to sing kind of what they call a Mexican hillbilly song. Amen. Pero cuando dejamos ir 
de la preocupación, entonces comenzamos a sentir que la carga se va. We start seeing that the challenge and the thing starts looking small in our eyes. See, the problem can look really big, bigger than this room, bigger than a building. But you know, the problem may not be that big at all. So if we let God and live by faith, we can make sure that the problem goes away and God can take care of that. Amen? We're going to be in Hebrews 11, ¿cómo está en Hebreos? Capítulo 11, versículo 6. Hebrews 11, 6. Amen? My wife says that the man makes the coffee, so he brews. So, the Bible says that he brews. Huh? Okay. Well, I do make coffee. I make the coffee in the morning. Amen? Praise the Lord. I love coffee. Now, it says that, uh, you know, I heard somebody say one day that it's Christian crap. But, I don't know, I like coffee. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is the rewarder of those who seek Him diligently. Amen? Hebreos 11, 6 dice, En realidad, sin fe es imposible agradar a Dios. Ya que cualquiera que se acerca a Dios tiene que creer que Él existe y que recompensa a quienes le buscan. Father, on the least of your servants today, I ask that you speak in your spirit, that you continue to be with us, that your Holy Spirit continues to speak to our lives today. In Jesus' name, we need you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I am so glad that you're here. Kelly, Fran, and Deborah. Glad that you are here. Praise the Lord. We had a visitor last week. His name was Ronnie Cox. And uh, he had been going through a rough ordeal. He's been going through a rough ordeal. And uh, so he's working today, but he'll be here with us next Sunday as well. Just wanted to let you know that. Thank you. Uh, how are you feeling, Kelly? I'm here. We're here. Good. We're going to pray for you. We're going to believe that God... Do you know that I... Can jump? Okay. You know? I mean, I'm telling you, I was in... I have a little office and I get in there sometimes to read and meditate. And the Lord spoke to me and told me, only doubters do not have what they need. And I said, Lord, forgive me. And I said, you know what? I believe that God is going to heal me. And I took possession of that healing. You know, and when I started believing and I started feeling that God was there, that God was truly speaking to me, you know, I got up from that chair and I said, I'm going to jump. And I started jumping and I went outside and I took off running around the house and stuff. And I'm telling you, I feel great. I feel great. Now, the VA had told me that I needed a hip surgery. Or that they were going to put me in therapy and they gave me all these muscle relaxers and painkillers and all this stuff. And so, you know, I mean, I obey. If people give me something to, for, you know, to benefit me, I'm going to obey. I'm going to take my pills and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm telling you, my hip feels right. You know, I don't, I don't feel the pain that I was feeling. I mean, that was the point there that Melissa was putting my sock on. You know, sometimes I take it. No, not <laughs> but, but she was putting my sock and I feel, I mean, but I'm telling you, I feel great. I feel great. And we're going to believe that for you, Kelly. I agree. When you, told, when you said that, I, because I had side in her, I had back side. Right. And I had side in her, so I was down for a time that I was going to get her back. And she was Sometimes the problem is that people get sick and they just lay. And then the, the more you lay, the worse you get. You know, because you're not active and stuff. Now, I mean, if the doctor tells you, hey, you need to take it easy a couple of days, and I, I mean, I'm not a true believer of that. You know, I believe that God sent doctors. I believe they're trying to get rid of an illness because illness is not from God. Amen? He died for us. He died for our sins, and He bore all our illnesses, all those stripes that He you know, that they gave on his back were for our illnesses. But the message today is going to be faith exercises to live by. 
In other words, we have to exercise our faith before we can live by faith. Amen? And sometimes it seems harder said, you know, it seems harder to do it rather than just say it. But we still need to put one foot in front of the other, just like we teach our little babies to walk, and start walking in faith. Romans 1.17 says this, For in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. How many of you have ever seen uh, Jesse the Planet on TV? Have you seen him? Boy, that guy has a testimony, don't he? I mean, he has a testimony and he's funny too. I love the way he preaches and, and stuff. And, and you know, I believe that Jesse the Planet had a close encounter with God, really did. Because he has an anointing so powerful that I was able to see just the planets because I went to Christ for the Nations to my theological seminary. And they bring so many people, so many ministers, you know, from different places that, uh, that are, you know, really, really, really working towards uh, making people understand that God still does miracles today. You know, and uh, I seen him perform a miracle there. Uh, on one of our students that had been having problems with his knee and stuff. And, and actually, they, had, they had, had about five or six surgeries on this girl's knee. And I mean, he laid hands on that knee and he prayed. And that girl, I mean, she just jumped up. And I said, God, you know, sometimes people, you see this on TV, you see these things on TV, that's a bunch of propaganda. You know, it's a dangerous thing to say this or that is not of the Holy Spirit. It's a dangerous thing, you know, because nobody can know what God is doing through other people. So we need to uh, be careful with that. But it's true. Faith can move mountains, that's what the Bible says. It can move mountains, and it can move anything that we are facing in our lives. Sometimes it's hard, you know, I know, I was telling them before you walked in, that when we have a problem, we focus so much on the problem that it becomes gigantic. And it may just be a little problem like that, but we have so much focus on this problem that it soon it overwhelms us. And it's all around us, and everywhere we see it seems that we create other problems, you know. But that's not, God doesn't want that. He wants us to walk by faith. So I want to build a faith picture in your life about your family, about your love, about your marriage, about the people around you. So that you can start living your life in faith. It's important because if we don't, we're going to fall flat on our face. Now, I posted this yesterday on Facebook. Three, uh, it's the third book of John. Not, uh, not the third chapter. The third book of John. Chapter 1, verse 2. It says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. So God does not want us to be in want. One of the things I want to tell you. God does not want us to be in one. I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So two things very important that I want you to see in this verse. I pray that you may prosper in all things. Not just in some things. Not just in that thing or that other thing or this thing. He says in all things. And then it says, the second thing that he tells us directly to us, he says, and be in health. Okay? That's not me telling you. That's the Word of God telling you all of you. He wants us to be in health. Now let me tell you. Sometimes there is things that come into our life and we get sick because we are in a fallen nature. And because this world is still around us. And though we are human, we still have a very privileged thing. It's prayer. And it's asking God to be healed. And it's asking God to take away those very things that afflict our body. Now, sometimes there is affliction of poverty. Now, one of the things that I want to tell you, I don't believe that God wants us to be in poverty. I believe that poverty is a state of mind. Now, the Bible doesn't say that. I said, I believe. Now, God does say that He wants us to prosper in all things. Then Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I have good things for you, plans to prosper. He even says the plans are to prosper us, not to harm us. 
So God does not want to harm you, or you, or you, or you, or you. No one. He wants to prosper us. He wants us to be in hell. And He wants us to be in more than enough. So we can be a testimony to others of what God can do. You understand? A lot of people say that miracles don't happen today. Now, there's a conversation. I'm not going to say who. But there was a conversation that went on this week. That we had with a lady. And she said this. God does not speak to you today in a burning bush. He's not going to appear in a burning bush and talk to anybody. If anybody sees a burning bush, it's because they're schizophrenic. And guess what? You're wrong. Because God can speak to anyone, any way that He wants. Now, as long as it's God. Now, if it's somebody saying, you know, God gave us enough discernment to be able to understand when somebody is not well, mentally. And He gave us enough discernment to be able to understand that that person had an experience with God. Now, when you want to deny those things, when you want to say, well, God can't do this and can't do that, then you're restricting God to your own mind frame. God can do anything that He wants. He's sovereign. He has absolute power and authority to do anything that He wants. So whatever He did in the Old Testament, back then, He can do it today. See? So if God wants to part the Red Sea or the Durant Lake, He can. Amen? That means he can. I'm not here no amen. Amen. Faith involves assurance and conviction. When your faith is solid, it stands under every situation and supports your very belief. So, no matter what happens, when you believe in God in faith, you're going to take those steps. No matter what, what it looks like. In other words, I do not believe my senses. Because guess what? Our senses can be wrong. In winter time, let me tell you this. In winter time, when you go outside, it's what? It's cold. And you feel it. Your body feels it. But when you're inside in the warmth, and you know, and to those of you that have central air and heating, it's nice and warm, and you've got a nice little cup of hot chocolate with marshmallows and stuff, and you're just enjoying a good Christmas movie, you know? And then all of a sudden, you feel warm. You don't feel the cold outside. But as soon as you go outside, you feel the reality of what it really is. Well, that's the, the, the same thing with faith. See, your senses can be wrong. You can be somewhere in comfort, but it doesn't mean that's what God has for you. Amen? God has something else for you. God has something good for you. So you have to understand that we cannot operate believing our senses on everything that we see. Everything that we see sometimes is not true, my brother. Sometimes the devil presents situations in our life which he says, this is what it is, and no matter what you do, it's never going to change. Well, guess what? God says that he can change those things. God is not going to leave you forsaken. This, I, I, I believe that the Bible says this, and, and, and I believe in this. He says that I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. God said that you will not be forsaken. God said that. Not me. God said that. And so if God said it, I believe it's true. So your assurance and your convictions make things possible to happen because you're walking in the belief that what God said is going to occur. Amen? And it's important that we do. How many of you heard about the Neo Obamacare? 2014 come into effect. So everybody's revolving around this problem. Oh my God, oh my... Who cares? Politicians will do what they do. You know, I don't care. I believe in God. And I believe that God can change any situation in any heart. It doesn't matter who it is. So faith always relates to something in the future. In other words, when you're working on hope, remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things we don't see. So if I'm walking and I'm believing, I'm hoping, look, Lord, I know that you're going to give me that. I know, I know, I know that I don't see it yet, but I'm walking toward it. So I'm walking in faith and I'm walking toward it. And pretty soon, guess what? You're there. You're there, but it's not something that's already happened because it wouldn't be faith. It's not money that you already have in the bank. It's not a car that you already have outside park. It's something in the future that God has for you that day. 
See? That's what hope is. Hope is expecting the things that you want that God is going to make come to happen. That's what hope is. It's important that we understand that. So be assured. Have self-assurance. Don't be weak. Remember I told him that the other last Sunday the message I told him that <laughs> I told him about Rocky. I, I, I was trying to give an example and the only example I could come up with is Rocky. The movie Rocky. You know, he's over there and he's fighting. You know, and he's got a big old eye like this. I mean, he's got blood coming out, squirting out his eye. But he's still going conscious. You know, he's still going conscious and he doesn't give up. And that's what God wants from us. God does not want us to give up. Before we are saved, our minds were trained to respond according to our carnal knowledge. So before we were saved, if they told us, oh man, if you would go to a doctor of you, say the doctor's situation, you would go to the doctor and the doctor told me you have three days to live. So, you know, it's over. If you weren't saved and you didn't have God in your, in your life, in your heart, well, you were going to believe the, what the person told you. The thing is now that we believe what God says, that He can change those situations. He can change anything that's going on in our lives. And it's important for us to understand because that's the only way we're going to please God. Because the verse says, it is impossible to please God without faith. Amen? This means that we no longer lean upon our own understanding. So we're not thinking, oh, I know what's going to happen because this is usually what goes on. I told you, the world is cyclical. I'm not going to say names, but uh, there's a person that we know that always tells us, well, the future repeats itself, history repeats itself, history repeats itself. And you know, I cannot find that anywhere in the Bible. I cannot find that in the Bible. I cannot find God helps those that help themselves. I can't find it in the Bible. I can't find that either in the Bible. I, I'll tell you what the Bible does say. The Bible says that God had a definite beginning. He gave, you know, He came into this earth. He stepped out ex nihilo, what means out of nothing. He stepped into this earth and He created everything. And then one day, He's going to wad it up like a dirty shirt. And it says that the earth will melt in a fervent heat because God's patience, God's sense, time of patience will run out. And, you know, eternity is going to commence. And then we're going to know if we were truly saved or not. Romans 8, 5 and 6, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. We know this. We know that people like to, you know, like things. You know, they like this and that. And, and the world is very, very, very attractive. But God says that we shouldn't set our minds on things of the flesh. <laughs> to live according to the Spirit and the things of the Spirit. Because whatever is carn carn carnally or whatever is of the flesh is death. So before we start thinking about gratifying our flesh and you know giving it what it wants, it wants a lot of things. But we have control of the Spirit. That's why one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. We have to have self-control. If we have a thousand dollars in the bank, we're not going to go spend fifteen hundred. You know? We have to have self-control. Amen? As Christians, we are now people of faith, which means God wants us to move in realms of faith, rather than unbelief. In other words, we are people who believe that things can happen. You know, have you ever gotten around somebody, well, I don't know, no, I don't know, yeah, but, and everything you tell them is but, 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 but. Faith! I believe that God said, I believe it can happen. I believe that God is going to make it come to pass. Period. Don't keep a comma, comma, comma. Put a period in that thing, end that thing. You know, end the sentence and believe that God is going to do what He said. Going to do. You know, one of the things I admire my wife is that she has a lot of faith. You know? And sometimes she takes me and tells me, Listen, if God said it's going to happen, I'm going to live by faith. And, 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 and the Lord uses her to instruct me sometimes and tell me, hey, what are you saying? You know? 
So I have to believe that God, you know, it's so true that God gives you some of this destiny and judge. Somebody placed somebody in your life to compliment you, to balance you out. So as you're starting out in your life, both of you, both of God brought you together for a reason. Right. Amen. Now it's up to you to discover that reason why God brought you together. And walk in faith and love and confidence. And cherish each other and love each other. Amen? I believe that. So, do you ever wonder why we so quickly receive those things that are negative? You know, why do we receive the things that are negative rather than the things that are really from God? You know, that God said it can happen. But we, we believe so many things that, you know, we, we hear our car taking a little bit and stuff. Oh my God. It's going to break down. I'm probably going to have to spend a whole bunch of money to fix it. Pray for the darn thing, you know? Pray for the darn thing. Say, hey, I believe that God is going to make my car last. I need this car for my job, Lord. You know I need it to go to church. God, help me. Amen? We have to, you know? How do you remain a person of faith when everything around you speaks of unbelief and doubt? It's hard. You know, the world, the world is full of negativity and doubt, but we have to step into that realm of faith. And we have to believe that God is around us, and because He's around us, things that are out of the way. You know, when we pass by, things move out of the way. You better move out of the way. That's the devil. You know, the devil's a liar. He's the father of it. And he'll make things happen. Praise the Lord. Amen. What well, a blessing myself today. Amen. Faith exercises to live by. In order for your faith to grow, it must exercise on a daily basis. Just like when we want to lose weight, we have to <laughs> exercise daily. You understand? We have to get over there and do something about it. We cannot expect something to change if we never do something different. That you know that. I mean, everybody, I mean, anybody that has preached, I think, has used that. You cannot do anything unless you change the circumstance you're in. I mean, it's not going to change unless you're willing to change it. You know, and God can change it, but hey, you got to take that step of faith. Faith without work is dead. Faith without works is dead. It was a missionary who used the example of a rowboat. And he would put people in his rowboat and he had two oars. And when he would use the right oar, the rowboat would go around in circles, you know, in one, one circle. And the people would look at him. Then he would use the other one and it would go around the other way in circle until he used both faith and works, he was able to move forward. Amen? So that's what we have to do. We have to use both things. We have to put our faith into practice and then put our works with it so that we can accomplish something. Amen? Praise the Lord. Begin every day with a faith picture of what you see God doing. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So every day we have to put, you know, God gave us a beautiful imagination. Boy, we can imagine so many things in our mind. And, you know, your imagination is for you to picture the things that God has for you. The blessings that God has for you. Amen. When you put those pictures of faith in your mind, you are going to start living life. You're going to walk into those pictures pretty soon. When you keep those things in your mind, when you keep things that happen, that God said will occur, you start putting things in perspective. And things start going Now, you, you have to understand that it has to be according to the Word of God. Go into the Bible. That's why it's important for us to read the Bible. To understand what it says. So then we can think what it says and we can begin moving towards what God has for us. Begin to get a faith picture of what you see God doing in your lives. Whether it's your marriage, your, dis your discipline, your children, your relationship, or your finances. One of the biggest things in the Bible that God speaks about is relationship and finances. Those two things. 
Those are things because people are always going to be around you, no matter whether you're a loner or not. I know some people that say, well, you know what, I wasn't made to be around people. <laughs> That's not what God says, man. You know, you were made to be around other people. You have to be around other people because God wants you to. He brings other people into your life to be able to uh, teach you and, to, and for you to be able to help others as well. As you meditate and pray about what, what God expects from you, you have to also speak faith in your heart and in your mouth. That's why the Bible says that when we're saved, we have to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. Because we have to speak it out. We have to articulate the words in this world so that it can come to pass. Amen? Did you know that when you speak, when you go outside there and you speak something, do you know it goes on for eternity? It just goes on and on and on. That's why the Word of God, you see the earth is here because the Word of God is eternal. And when He spoke it into existence, it said, even when we leave this world, because God spoke us into existence, we're still going to be alive. We're going to be alive in the cross. We're going to be alive in God. We're still going to be there. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, everybody knows this verse. Trust in the Lord. With all your heart, and be not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. So begin to confess to one another the things you see God doing in your life. So when you go to your sister's house, you tell her, you know what? God says that you're going to prosper. God says that you're going to heal. You know what? God says that you are more than a conqueror. We have to speak things of faith in people's lives. If we don't, we discourage people and we're not doing what God says. We're not giving the faith. You know, everybody has a measure of faith. You have a measure of faith. You, 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 and you. Everybody does. Different. You understand? But that faith starts to grow as we start seeing God work in our lives. Okay? So, one of the things I like is when people come and say, this is what God did for me. We've done that a couple of times. This is what God has done for me. Anytime that God does it, I think you've done that a couple of times over there. You said, God did this for me. Oh, your truck. When you bought your truck. She was so happy when she bought her truck for me. Now, 2 Corinthians 4.13, But since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, and therefore we speak. So, when God does something for you, speak it out. And if you believe what God says, speak it out. Wherever you're at. No matter if you're in Walmart or... You know, when I was, when I was young... <clears throat> that was not too long ago. Uh, when I was young, I, 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 I used to live in a little town uh, by the border called Del Rio, Texas. And they used to have uh, H-E-B. H-E-B food market. And uh, I really didn't know how to say H-E-B back then, because it was, it was H period, E period, and then a B. And I used to say head, you know, let's go ahead, you know, I want to go to head, you know. But you know, there were so many people there in, in, in that store, I remember, because they always had good prices and stuff, and they always wanted to talk about H-E-B. Everybody you heard it tell, hey man, you hear they have this over there at H-E-B. You know, what I'm trying to say is this. We should be people that people talk about in faith. Do you know so and so? you know that? Man, when you talk to that person, man, go talk to that person. You know, that's what, that's what we need to be. We need to be people of faith. That people can know and understand and believe that God is real. Philemon 1.6 that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in Christ Jesus. So when we share our faith, it acknowledges the good things that God has in our lives. When we, you know, when, when, you, when you go out there in Durant, you hear the names of different people in the community that are kind of known, you know. 
Uh, I hear the name of Greg C. I hear the name of Butch Arnett. I hear the name of, you know, different people, the mayor, you know, the uh, police chief. Some people that are distinguishable because they hold a role in the community. Well, what we need to start hearing as Christians is people speaking about Jesus Christ. And the more that we share our faith, the more that we share things with people about God, the more that people start talking about Jesus. You know, there's going to be a time here pretty quick where people are going to start coming into churches because they're going to see the way that things are happening in the Bible. And they, you already see it. You know, every empire has a fall. In it. And the United States is closely getting to that point where, you know, God's hands are moving apart. And we're going to start feeling it as Christians and stuff. And people are going to start wondering why is this all happening. And they're going to start seeking answers in who? In the Christian people. In the people of God. And we have to be ready for them. Amen. Are you ready? I don't, I, are you ready? Amen. That's right. Romans 10 8. But what does it say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The Word is near you. So the Word of God has always had to be in your lips. Even in the Old Testament, this Word shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night. And the people used to, they teach your children the Word of God. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So faith comes by looking for and finding a biblical solution. When we look for the solution, we have to go to the Bible. But it can't be that way, yes it is that way. It is that way. When you want a solution, you go to the Bible and you ask God, what do you have in your word that can help me? When we do that, the solution often comes. And when we apply it in faith and say, this is what God said, so I'm going to believe that rather than the situation, things change. Things make a 360 degree turn and turn around because God is not a liar. I don't care who it is. God is not a liar. Amen? Joshua 1.8 The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. That's, I just read that. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. The word of God. You remember when they asked Jesus, did He come to fulfill the law? He said, I didn't come to do away with it. I didn't come to do away with it, I came to fulfill it. In other words, when God came, He came to acknowledge that everything that was written in the book of the law, in the book of God, was true. And that God had sent His Son for us to be able to have a Savior. It's important that we understand that. Learn to go to God's Word and study it for whatever you need. Learn to go to His Word and study it for whatever you need. Your faith pictures must be put into action. So now that you have a picture of what faith is, you can start putting that into action. You can start practicing, you know, the Word of God in your life. You can start saying, you know what, I'm going to start believing God's Word instead of my situation. You know. Now let me tell you. I can tell you this because... Let me tell you, there's nothing, there is absolutely no one in this life that has not gone through a problem. Everyone has gone through some form of a problem in some form or fashion. Because that's just life. We are here and when, when that happens, it's to make us grow. It's to make us mature, it's to make us, you know, uh, it's to make us learn something. Sometimes we don't understand it, sometimes we say, no, that can't be it. But I think that God teaches us and builds our character through the problems that we go through. Through the things that we come out of, because when you come out, you don't come out a bitter person, you come out a better person. Right. Amen? We don't want to be bitter people, we want to be better people for God. Amen? I believe that in Jesus' name. A Christian man, you know, needs to acknowledge that God is faithful at all times. When people ask me, you know, I had a couple of people that, you know, when, when the doctor, Dr. Prasad, 
uh, is the one that you know sees me and, and, and he told me about my hip and stuff and I told him, my wife, you know what, this is what he said. And then I uh, I went to a couple of people and I told them, I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for me. I want you to put me in your prayers. People of faith that I know that pray, give it to me. And, and, and people, those people started praying. And, and those people started praying so hard that God came to my office and told me in my heart and told me, listen, only doubters don't have a day. You know? Only doubters don't have, you know, the things that I already gave them. You believe and you will receive your healing. So say to your bones, this is the exact thing that God told me. Say to your bones, be healed in Jesus' name. And right then and there, I stood up and I told I went to my wife. My wife was going to school and stuff, and I told her, listen, I don't care what you're doing. God just healed me. God just healed me. I'm taking that time. I don't care. God just healed me. And, and, and see, you know, God does things like that. You know, I, I cannot believe and understand people who say that God is not a miracle working God. You know, because God, God performs miracles today like He did in the Old Testament, like He did in the days when the disciples were here. He performs every miracle, you know, in our lives. You know, every time that you pray and you receive an answer, it's a miracle. Every time that you pray, you receive a miracle. It's, you know, it, it, oh gosh. Let me see. Do you want serious changes in your life? Do you want serious changes? We need serious changes in our lives. America needs serious changes. You have to apply the principles of faith. Apply what God has told you today. And tell me, you come back next week and tell me that faith won't work. You can come back and tell me. I'm not going to believe you because I know it works. Faith works. Faith works when you apply the principles that God wants you to apply. And things are starting materializing. So, one of the things when you walk in faith is that you expect changes to occur. I'm walking in faith, but you, are you expecting for something to change? Because if you tell me you're walking in faith, then something has to change. Whether it's you, whether it's your situation, whether it's some, something has to change for you to be walking in faith. Something has to move out of the way. Something has to move out of the way because God is coming through. So, I want you this week, on anything that you're expecting, I want you to make sure that you expect a change to happen. Don't just say, I believe. I know that it's going to happen, so be expecting. It's like a football player out on the field. A receiver. A receiver goes and runs out and he's waiting for the ball. He's waiting to receive the ball because he knows it's going to come. You understand? So I want you to act like you're a football, <laughs> a football player and wait for that faith to come. Amen? Wait for that miracle to receive that miracle. Amen? Expect changes to occur. Mark 11, 24, Therefore I say to you, what, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. It doesn't say you may have them, or you might have them, or maybe you will have them. It says you will have them. Very simple. Now, it's you either believe or you don't. The Bible is very clear about it. Today I have for you a blessing or a curse. Choose you what you will take. So what are we going to take? I'm going to take a blessing. How about you? I'm going to take a blessing because I believe that God has that for us. Amen? Alright. Yesterday is canceled. Yesterday is already canceled. So whatever went on yesterday, don't worry about it. It already happened. Okay? But there's consequences. In it. My, wife, my wife wrote a book called uh, Choices Communicate Consequences, right? She, she has a good book. She wrote a book. But let me tell you, even if the consequence is there, even if the consequence is there, whatever happened yesterday, this is your today. Today is what God has for you. Not, not yesterday. It's gone. It's over and done with. Whatever you didn't do there, do today. When you do that today, it's going to be a lot better. Let me read this for you. 
Yesterday is a canceled check. We cannot negotiate it. Tomorrow is a promissory note. It can be utilized until it arrives. Today is cash in hand. It must be invested. The psalmist had a good way of expressing those things. You know? Today, whatever you have, put it to use. I think there's a song that says, This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord made. I will rejoice. Uh, you know, that's what He wants us to do. He wants us to rejoice and be happy and be glad in it. So if you learn anything today, learn that faith is a muscle and you have to exercise it either any way you can or it's going to become limp and soft. And you're going to start getting. You have to exercise faith so that it works, so that it's strong. And when you do, you're on the right track. God has good things for you. Now I want to pray. And I want to tell you. We love you. We appreciate you. Now let me tell you. The 15th of July. Please, please, please. With all my heart I ask you, please be here because we have an invited guest. On the 15th of July, we have an invited guest speaker. His name is Dr. Don Gray. And Don. And uh, he's actually a missionary in Brussels. And so he's going to be here with us. And he's a tremendous preacher. He's, you know, he's been around for a long time. He preached for 45 years. And uh, he's a great guy. Uh, me and my wife had the honor of meeting him when I was in a different church and, and uh, we became good friends and he was kind of like a mentor to us and so I invited him and he has accepted he's going to be here and uh, he's glad that we have a, you know, a work of God and so he'll be here and I, I want you to be blessed that day so on the 15th uh, of July I want you to be here if at all possible Amen Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that faith is exercised today. We thank you that you have given your people a word to trust in, to hold on to. You know, when things get rough, God, we walk in that faith. It doesn't matter what things look like. We are stepping in faith. We are stepping in confidence in your word. Root it in your word, and we know that we can go to anything with your word. Jesus, I ask that you bless your people as they come and as they go. Bless those that have given their tithes and offerings. I pray that you continue to be in our lives. That you continue to work in our lives. And as you continue to work, I ask that you be, Father, patient with us. That you give us strength and endurance to be able to take on things that come in our lives. Father, I pray for Margaret. I pray for her family. I pray for Kelly and Fran and Deborah, Lord. I pray for Lacey. Father, I pray for all those that are not here that couldn't come. For Frank and Ben, and I pray for healing for him. He's sick. Father, we ask that you heal him, that you give him a touch of healing as you always have. We know right now that you're going through his body, Father, and removing anything that's going on in his life. We ask that you strengthen him, Lord, that you make those feeble knees, those weak knees, Father, strong, and that he rise. In Jesus' name, thank you for everything that you do in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Amen and amen. Melissa, do you have an announcement that you want to make? No?
Man, I, I can relate. Sometimes I feel that way. If you have a good rest, I hope you do. I hope you hey, This is the best place to come and rest. Because the Spirit of God is here. So any of you who are listening, the Spirit of God spoke to you. Amen? So we believe that. Amen. How many of you believe that? We believe it. Thank you so much for being here. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. God bless you.
Right. She left her husband with the same son died. Oh, okay, good, good. good. Who's unemployed? Did you shut the camera up, there? Melissa? Huh? Did you shut the camera? Oh. She forgot. Yeah, I forgot. I'm only 35. Well, I need to refill.